Hi, this is Ian X04, and today we're going to build a uh, concrete factory again. All right, so my last video was for a concrete factory as well, but that farm was designed before some game-changing updates were made in recent versions. Previously, using a farm to send gravity blocks like concrete powder, sand, or gravel into the end dimension would often crash the game or server if there wasn't a player in the end dimension near the obsidian platform so that all those duped entities could be processed. That's why my last concrete factory was designed instead to send duped entities from the exit portal to the spawn chunks. It was meant as a way to make the farm crash-proof, which was a unique quality among concrete factories at the time. But that changed starting with version 1.20.5. Now entities that teleport to the end dimension will load the area around the obsidian platform for 15 seconds, regardless of whether there is a player present. This makes the traditional approach of sending duped entities to the obsidian platform completely safe from crashing. Version 1.21 also brought another change relating to the obsidian platform. It used to be that any blocks in the three layers over the obsidian platform would be deleted when an entity arrived on the platform, leaving nothing behind. In 1.21, however, any blocks here are instead broken down into drops, like when you mine or break things with TNT explosions or wither cages. This allows the space over the obsidian platform to be sort of a convenient blast chamber for many types of farms, including concrete factories. The instant concrete factory that I'll cover today is easy to build in a few minutes from accessible materials and can produce nearly 29,000 blocks per hour, an unusually fast rate given how simple it is. That's a full stack of blocks every 8 seconds, with the added bonus that the farm doesn't require a player to be nearby. If you like, the farm can be chunk-loaded so that it runs in the background while you do other things. As a result, many players probably won't need a faster concrete factory than this one. This concrete factory uses a variant of Redstonia's sand duper to send gravity blocks to the end dimension. This is the same class of duper that I used in my previous concrete factory design, so please watch that video for an explanation of how it works, linked in the description. There are four duping modules in the factory, each sending a falling block entity to the end dimension at slightly different times in a 10 game tick cycle. These modules are coordinated so that when a duped block entity arrives and falls to the platform, it lands just in time to turn into a block, so that another block entity can arrive right on top of it, so that it too can turn into a block. These powder blocks are then converted to concrete by water that flows next to them, or over them. But this water behaves in a special way. The water on the platform is deleted each time a duped block entity arrives at the platform but the water stream instantly reforms across it to convert the concrete powder to concrete blocks and to sweep the drops across the platform for collection. This unexpected behavior of water relies on the way that fluid updates are scheduled in the game. Water schedules an update for itself after five game ticks of getting a block update, and even if that water is removed or deleted, as long as that water is replaced before the scheduled update occurs, the new water will still process that fluid update allowing it to spread to neighboring spaces, which may have had their own previously scheduled updates. This cascade of updates allows the reintroduced water to spread instantly across the platform. If you would like to learn more about instant fluid flow, check out this video from FX Process, linked in the description. The timings from the duper need to be coordinated with the water updates so that everything can work together. The instant water flow requires a new falling block to arrive every five game ticks to delete the water stream, and this timing is interleaved with the need for a second falling block to also arrive after six game ticks so that they can stack on top of one another. The four duper modules are configured with just the right delays to make all this happen. This is a 20 game tick torch repeater clock that alternates between powered and unpowered states every 10 game ticks, effectively making this a 10 game tick clock. The power change is detected by observers that monitor the clock, either directly or indirectly, or with a delay that's configured by scaffolding, since information about how much a scaffolding block is overhanging cascades to adjacent scaffolding blocks every game tick. These observers start each of the duping modules at just the right time. The raised gravity block temporarily supports a scaffolding block which is detected by another observer that activates a secondary piston, which pushes the duplicated falling block into the end. The collection system needs to be synchronized to the duper each time that the farm starts up. 
This observer detects the breaking of a temporary block over the Obsidian platform when the first duped block arrives, and then coordinates three dispensers to waterlog three chests to start the instant water flow system. Chests are used because they can be waterlogged and are big enough so that drops can't get stuck in what would otherwise be a potentially stagnant water source. Drops are collected using a series of three hoppers that feed into chests. Due to the rates of this concrete factory, this corner hopper needs to be at double speed. Okay, let's start building. First off, make sure you're not using a respawn anchor. It'll probably be easier to build and use this farm if it's disabled. Find and secure the portal room at a stronghold. Break the spawner, set a bed nearby as a spawn point, load the eyes into the portal frame, and remove the lava pool underneath. Go up the stairs and fall straight down from the far left corner of the portal frame. Dig a hole two blocks deep and place down a distinctive block that we'll use as a reference point. We'll need to remove these two adjacent sides of the portal frame, which is commonly done by growing huge red mushrooms nearby. From the middle of the side of the portal frame, go out to the wall, break one block overhead and the two blocks beneath. Place a dirt block in the hole with a red mushroom on top and apply bone meal until a huge mushroom appears. The huge mushroom replaces any block that you can't suffocate inside of, so blocks that aren't completely solid, like the end portal frames, are replaced by the mushroom. Clear out the huge mushroom and repeat the process on the adjacent side. Now dig out a 4x4 hole, two blocks deep, under the portal starting at the reference block that you left earlier. Build a 20 game tick torch repeater clock next to the reference block, making sure that you right click once on both repeaters so that they're set to a delay of four game ticks or two redstone ticks. Set another repeater at maximum delay to point at the side of the repeater in the clock, and then behind it, place a solid block with a powered lever on top. Place a trapdoor next to the redstone dust in the clock, with the hinge attached to the top half of the block. Place scaffolding on the reference block, and then extend the scaffolding over the trapdoor, and then extend the scaffolding into this question mark shape. At the end, set an observer to look down at the scaffolding, and another observer to look down at the scaffolding over the trapdoor. Now set another trapdoor over the block next to the reference block, and place an observer to look down at this trapdoor. Place another observer to look down at the redstone torch in the corner, and place a solid block over it. Place solid blocks under the exposed edges of the portal. This will help keep you from accidentally touching the portal and teleporting away as you continue to build. Jump on the solid block and jump up to place a piston under you. Look at the wall and place a solid block with redstone dust on top, followed by a piston facing your feet. Repeat this process on top of the three other observers. Place wall blocks over an exposed side of the portal. Place a solid block against the middle wall block with scaffolding on top, and then jump into it to extend the scaffolding by one in both directions. Set two observers to look at the ends of the scaffolding, each powering a solid block. Repeat this process on the other exposed side of the portal. Now place a different gravity block in each duping module. Flip the lever and leave it running for a few seconds, and then turn it off. Confirm that the gravity blocks are still in the duping modules, and then go through the portal to reach the end dimension, and you should find the drops for each of the four duplicated block types. And if you don't find all of these, you'll need to return to the stronghold to troubleshoot. For the rest of this build tutorial, I'll assume that the obsidian platform is floating over the void, but it may look different in your world, like your platform might be surrounded by endstone. But even if this is the case, you should still be able to conceptually follow the same instructions and make any necessary adjustments. Go to the southwest corner of the obsidian platform so that your feet are at the block coordinates of 98, 49, and 2, and bridge out west towards the main island. On the other side of the obsidian platform, bridge out to make a 2x2 two two ledge. Place two dispensers at the end, each with a water bucket inside, facing a double chest. Bridge out on two more blocks from the same corner, and again add a dispenser at the end with a water bucket inside, facing a chest. Add another 2x2 two two ledge in the corner between the dispensers and chests. 
crouched down to make a line of three redstone dust from the corner to this dispenser. Stand at the corner and place a block over the single dispenser with a repeater pointing at this block, and right-click on the repeater once to set it to four game ticks of delay or two redstone ticks of delay. Stack two temporary blocks on the corner of the obsidian platform and set an observer to look at the temporary block so that it powers the line of redstone dust. Don't skip these two temporary blocks. You actually need them to initialize the farm correctly. On the opposite corner of the platform, place two temporary blocks on the west side and bridge out on two double chests. Replace the temporary blocks with hoppers feeding into these chests. This hopper at the corner will need to run at double speed, so we'll make some adjustments to it later. On the first block of the bridge to the main island, attach a double chest to the side and replace the first bridge block with a hopper to feed into it. Go back to the single chest in the corner and crouch to add five more chests in a line along the length of the platform. Crouch down to put a sign against the last chest so that it's over the hopper. Crouch down to place wall blocks over the other two hoppers and build off these to make a border around the platform. Jump on the border and pillar up on two blocks to extend the border into an enclosure around the platform. Jump down and pillar up on four temporary blocks in the middle of the obsidian platform, and surround the top block with a block on each side. Replace the central top block with a chest, and crouch down to waterlog it. Now we need to get under the platform to finish the double speed hopper collection. Place lava against the bridge to the main island. After a few seconds, pick up the lava and replace it with water. Pick up the water and work your way down the cobblestone pillar until your feet are at a Y level of 46. Bridge out under the platform. And then add a double chest under the middle hopper and feed this chest with a hopper pulling from the hopper in the corner. If you like, you can expand this torch just by adding a hopper and chest under each of the primary collection chests. Build a staircase back to the bridge and remove the temporary blocks to flood the platform. This completes the concrete factory. Whenever you would like to operate the farm, you'll need to first set your spawn point at the stronghold by right-clicking on the bed. Configure the duping modules with the gravity blocks that you want to dupe, and only after you have the gravity blocks loaded should you go to the end platform and place a dummy block in front of the observer. The order of these steps is critical so that the collection system can properly detect when the farm starts. Now head back to the stronghold and flip the lever. It's important not to use the end portal while the farm is running, since this may delete the water in the collection system at the wrong time. Each duping module in the farm produces 7,200 drops per hour, and the double chests in the default collection system that I showed in the tutorial will start to fill up after about 25 minutes. If you don't feel like waiting around, just build a chunk loader nearby, and the factory will continue to work while you leave and do something else. When you're done with this batch of duping, return to the stronghold and flip the lever to power down the factory, and then go through the portal to collect your drops. The farm can also be used to dupe sand and gravel, of course, and if you dupe gravel, 10% of it will convert into flint. If it bothers you to arrive in the middle of all that water every time that you arrive on the obsidian platform, you can make this little upgrade to disable the water with a push of a button. The water will be gone the next time that anything teleports to the end.
When you want to use the farm again, be sure to push the button first, wait a couple seconds, and then place a block in front of the observer to re-enable the collection system. And as always, be sure to check the video description for corrections and additional information. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. This farm was fun to design, and it turned out to be a really nice collaborative effort on my Discord server that took a lot of surprising turns for the better. I'd like to thank all the people who came together to share their great ideas for the farm and also for their comments on the drafts of this video. I want to especially thank Sam, Undescensions, and Big Booty 17 for many of the key insights into stacking the powder blocks, and also the simplified instant water flow that really helped pull all this together. We really got to a great place, so thank you. And thanks to all the viewers for watching today.